Here we are in Unit 3, this time with two musical titles, Ragtime and the New Orleans Brass Band. Ragtime is not that uncommon. Most of us have heard it, but it really doesn't sound like American pop music. It sounds more like old-time dance music or silent movie accompaniment. It sounds very European in a way. Well, let's take that and look at it very closely. You know, Scott Joplin was an extremely important African-American musical artist. He came from Texarkana, Texas, and was a classically trained pianist, and quite a good one. But you know, Scott could never appear on the concert stage. In that time in Jim Crow America, his skin color prevented him from playing his beloved Mozart and Beethoven. So instead, he began playing uh, in the salons and the houses of prostitution and the bars and the turpentine camps, perfecting the style that became known as ragtime. The origins of that title are a little obscure, but if you read very carefully, you find out that some scholars say, well, it's because the time was ragged. The melodies up top kind of danced back and forth. That's not the truth at all. Scott Joplin, the disappointed and disaffected young classical pianist who invented a brand new style, he called it ragtime. But what he was doing was ragging, just as we do today. When you rag somebody, you get on them. You get angry at them. Ragtime with Scott Joplin ragging. Maybe rage is the better word. New Orleans brass band music was a completely different musical style. Today, we mistakenly call it Dixieland. Now, that's really wrong. Dixieland was a revival of New Orleans brass band music in the 40s, but it was very much an all-white revival, whereas New Orleans brass band music was both Latino and African-American and European-American. Those bands were usually comprised of between five and ten players, and they had a rhythm section, sometimes called a second line, which was a drummer, maybe a tuba player, a pianist, maybe a banjo player, and then it had two to four to five lead wind instruments. You see, it was really a miniature military band. Those military bands had originally been put together on both sides of the Civil War. African Americans were not considered trustworthy enough on either side to carry weapons. And so they were given duties around the camp. One of the best duties you could get then was playing music. Their music grew up in the barracks and in the trenches of the Civil War. But once that was over, America's pop musicians plied their trade on the riverboats and wound up in the port of New Orleans a port virtually untouched in the Civil War. The music they made was, again, not European. It was hardly military. It wasn't African, and it wasn't Iberian. It was new. It was brilliant. It was American music at its best. At the end of this unit, we're going to have a discussion board discussion. The discussions online are really important. They are one of my principal teaching tools. Actually, you're going to be teaching each other. And I'm going to ask you to compare either two ragtime artists or two New Orleans brass band artists. It's important that you get involved in these discussions. You will learn from each other. In the discussion boards, they're really online Socratic circles. The Socratic circle was how Socrates taught. He assembled his students around him and let them speak to each other. This is what you're going to be doing on the discussion boards, although it won't be in real time. 
So if you answer a little slow or if you need to do some research, that's good. But you need to be involved in the what you will learn about Scott Joplin and Jelly Roll Morton and Louis Armstrong and his wife Lil Harden will be a great foundation for looking at the rock and roll that's in your future.